What's up everybody? My name is Justin. Welcome to my channel, 502 Fragrance Views, where the goal of my channel is to give you amazing recommendations for great fragrances, while at the same time bridging the gap between those that are in the fragrance community and those that are the average consumers. So, it's the last day of the week. A little bit later than usual, but I got another episode for you guys. It's another week. It's another episode of Spotlight Fragrance of the Week. For those of y'all that don't know what that series is, each week I spotlight a new fragrance to do a fragrance review of a fragrance that either A, I don't think it's very well known and I think should give more spotlight, or B, it's a very well known fragrance. It's just I'm giving y'all my take on it, my opinion on it. So, for those of y'all that have not subscribed to the channel yet, I definitely encourage you to subscribe to my channel because I've got a lot of great content planned for you guys. Hit the post notification bell to let you know whenever I upload a new video. So, without further ado, let's hop into another episode of Spotlight Fragrance of the Week featuring, as you can tell by the title, Guerlain EDL Eau de Parfum. So for those of y'all that don't, uh, have not heard of this fragrance, um, I think this fragrance is definitely pretty known in the fragrance community, if not this one, at least the Loam EDL line. Um, this is the Eau de Parfum version. This is the one that came out second. This came out in the spring of 2016. Um, the, the first one was the Eau de Toilette. Um, I have not smelled that one, but I have heard that that one is really nice. And I have heard that some people like the Eau de Parfum more than the Eau de Toilette. I have heard some people like the Eau de Toilette more than the Eau de Parfum. And actually, there is a whole Loam EDL line that is very nice. You got Loam EDL Eau de Toilette. You got the Eau de Parfum. You got Loam EDL Sport. You got the new Loam EDL Cool. And you've now got the sadly discontinued Loam EDL Cologne, which this one right here is going to be a future review. If you haven't tried this out, definitely buy it now because it's discontinued. Uh, I've got three bottles of this. But anyway, let's hop into this review of Guerlain Loam EDL de Parfum. Like I said, this came out in 2016, and this is classified as an oriental woody fragrance. The perfumers behind this fragrance is Terry Wasser and his colleague Daphne, no Daphne Jelk. Um, Terry Wasser is the in-house perfumer for Guerlain, and I believe he's been that way most of his career. Same thing with Daphne Jelk being his being uh, his colleague. Uh, so most of their work together, all the career, has been with Guerlain. I do know that Terry Wasser also created um dior addict that nice woman's fragrance he created that one at least at least the original release but when hopping into this fragrance if i was to get you guys the note breakdown because it's a lot in here at the top you've got bergamot almond spices lavender rosemary and thyme at the heart you've got rose vanilla incense and cherry and at the base, you've got tonka bean, sandalwood, and leather. So, ultimately with this fragrance, this fragrance is all about cherries and almonds. And also you got a prominent vanilla as well. Um, I would say, I've, said, I've mentioned this fragrance a few times already on my channel. And I always dub this as the Tom Ford Lost Cherry Killer. And when I say that, I'm not saying that this is a clone of Lost Cherry. They're both cherry-based fragrances, it's just they go in different directions. And I prefer this one over Lost Cherry when it comes to a cherry-based fragrance. So, what I get from this a lot, I get cherry, almond, and tonk, and, uh, and leather. And also you get a nice vanilla as well. Those are, those are like the main notes that come to my mind. <clears throat> when you first spray this fragrance, this was my scent of the day by the way. Um, when you first spray this fragrance, from the get-go, it's very, it's definitely on the sweeter side. At least in the initial spray, for the first few minutes, you do get a, a very brief freshness from a few citruses that's in here. But you smell the cherry, to, at least to me, you smell the cherry, vanilla, leather, and almond from the very beginning. You smell it right away. Uh, it's very nice, even though this is marketed for men, I do think that this fragrance is unisex. I do think that a woman can wear this. So even in the, in the opening, you get a little bit of a freshness, but you get, a over, you get a freshness a little bit, but it's all about sweetness from the very beginning in the opening. When it goes into the dry down, as you're transitioning to the dry down, you do get a balsamic type of 
uh, scent that's coming out and that's from the incense that's in the heart. Um, I give the incense more in the dry down than in the opening. Uh, I would say that even in the dry down, you still get an almondy type smell. Um, almond is in the top notes of this fragrance. Um, and when you get deep into the dry down, even when the almond goes away, to me you still get an almond like smell and that's from the tonka bean. Tonka bean does have, it's a sweet note, yeah, but it's also got like a bittersweet almond facet to it. And I still get almond deep into the dry down because of the tonka bean. Um, I would say throughout the life of this fragrance, you do get an undertone or a nice, honestly it's not even an undertone, it's pretty prominent. You get a smooth leather throughout the life of this fragrance, at least to my nose. Yes, it's all about cherry and almonds at, uh, at the forefront, but underneath that, you get a leather, a nice smooth leather note throughout the entirety. I would say that aside from the cherry, you do get a very nice sweetness from the vanilla. The vanilla is in here quite a bit, um, and that actually lasts through the life of the fragrance, at least to my nose as well. Ultimately, it is a very sweet fragrance. A little bit, of course, it's free from the cherry, but I would say you have to be a fan of sweeter fragrances to like this. If you don't like sweeter fragrances, there, I'm a, there's a chance that you won't like it, but I would still encourage it. You can't take my word for everything. You can't take an influencer's word and be like, okay, I won't try it. No, I still want you to try it, even if you don't like sweeter fragrances. When it comes to versatility of this fragrance, to me, this is more of a fall and winter fragrance. I do know this fragrance right here made Jeremy fragrances like all season, all occasion fragrances. Um, I haven't tried this in the hotter weather like he has, and I'm kind of scared to honestly, but maybe I'll try it one time. This one to me is more of a fall winter fragrance in my opinion. Um, it's definitely on the sweeter side. I feel like the high heat would bring out the sweetness too much, but I gotta try it though. Um, I would say when it comes to occasions, for those of y'all that have not seen my top 10 date night fragrances, I put that out the other day. I'm gonna leave a link at the end to see it. Spoiler alert, this did make my top 10 date night fragrances uh, for men. I think this would be really good in the date night scenario. It's very nice, it's, to me it's seductive, it's got a sexiness to it, a unique sexiness. Um, I think you can wear this casually. I think you can wear this in an office or work type environment. I think it would be very safe, you won't offend anybody. Uh, in a night out clubbing scenario, for to me personally, I feel like this lacks the projection of it being good in a night out clubbing scenario. It's got the longevity, but to me it lacks the projection and scent trail. So I wouldn't wear this personally for a night out clubbing scenario, but you can. And then lastly, for a formal occasion or a like special occasion, really dressed up, um, you can wear this as well. Um, I just think that I would rather wear certain other fragrances. But overall, it is very versatile. This is a very versatile fragrance. When it comes to uniqueness, I think that if you was to wear this fragrance, and I, I handed it this in a, in a date night video, um, this one to me is very creative. I do think you will get comments from people saying you smell that you smell unique. I do think this is a unique fragrance. Keep in mind that even though we're in the fragrance community, we're a small minority of people. Majority of the people that you're gonna be around is average consumers that don't know much about fragrances, that typically only know designers. So in this one right here, you typically don't see in department stores, at least in the, in the United States. So I think when you're around people, people will be like, oh, what's that smell? It's, oh, it's you, you smell really nice. You smell very unique. I think that you will get those type of comments with this. When it comes to compliments on this, I think this one will be a really nice compliment getter because to me, it's got a sexiness to it. Uh, it's got an addictiveness to it as well. And also, like I said, it's very unique. You will smell very unique to those around you. And odds are you will get more compliments because of that because you won't be smelling like every other guy that wears Blue de Chanel or Dior Sauvage. And uh, certain other ones too. So, all in all, when it comes to this fragrance right here, Glon Long Edi Auto Parfum, it is a very solid fragrance. Your line is just a, it's known in the fragrance community to be a really, a nice brand that puts out quality fragrances. Um, I would say, um, the Guerlain Long EDL line, I gotta try the rest, but the great thing about your line, at least, at least with this line, 
if you this can be found for a great price on discounters like fragrance net or perfume.com i'm gonna leave a link below so you so you can click on it see where you can buy it you can find this for like you can find these for like anywhere from 30 to 50 bucks i believe for the quality that you're getting like i did with these with these oh man it's, it's great it's, it's definitely a steal um this one to me even though I think you can find it inexpensive on discounters uh it's got it's definitely worthy of a hundred 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 to hundred and thirty you know like price tag like a higher price tag I think it's deserving of it because it's the quality so like I said all in all I think that this is a great fragrance you will smell unique to those around you the longevity will be great because I wore this today and I, I do get whips every now and then this has lasted at the minimum eight hours on my skin and it had projection for like maybe at first hour hour and a half and then it came down more for a skin scent but the longevity is really good so the overall scent really good very unique the longevity is good i think it's very versatile i think it's better for the cooler weather personally when it comes to all occasions uh if you want to wear it in the hotter weather you can but i would be scared to uh, i think you're gonna get a lot of compliments with this because you're gonna smell unique to those around you and and all in all I think it's just a great fragrance. So that's my quick review. Uh, Spotlight fragrance of the week: Guerlain Lone Edial Eau de Parfum. Really, really good fragrance. Let me know in the comment section, you guys. Have y'all tried or smelled this fragrance? What do y'all think of this fragrance? And if y'all smell Tom Ford's Lost Cherry too, let me know in y'all's opinion. How do you think this stacks up to Lost Cherry? Because I think this is better than the Tom Ford's Lost Cherry, at least in my opinion. So. That's all I got for you guys today. Like I said, if you haven't, click the subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel. I got a lot of great content planned for you guys. And yeah, that's all I got. Till next time.